guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Welcome back to my channel. We are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to, oh, week number 157, would you believe? So, yep, for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, um, we are doing reruns. So we are doing a rerun of week number 57, but we're actually week one, week number 157. So that's how long we have been doing these. So we are going to make today the original, what I would call the original Patricia Veramonte's book page pockets. Um, so if you are wanting to join along, what you will need is you will need obviously some book pages. Now I've brought along a few different types, well different, not different types, they're obviously all book pages. Um, a few different book pages anyway, so that I've got some um, different fonts going on. You're going to need some scissors, you're going to need some glue um, and then extra kind of additional things would be if you want to round the corners of your pockets you might want to have a corner rounder um, and you can sew these on the sewing machine so it's up to you whether you want to sew them or whether you want to glue them. Um, I'm pretty sure that I said this in the previous you know video kind of you know a couple of years ago they don't have to be stitched. They look equally as nice, whether they are stitched or whether they are um, glued, you know. But if you want to use a sewing machine, then that would be fine. If you don't, that is also fine. So I might do a mixture of some glued and some stitched. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll kind of see how I get on. Um, and then aside from that, you might want to just have some mods and pieces to actually decorate your pockets up with. Um, you know, some lace and some, yeah, some just pretty bits and knickknacks to um, pop onto your bits. But yeah, let's get kind of making and see how we do them. So let's take my first book page. So I have got this one. This was from a vintage um, kind of plant and, you know, flower book. And I love the fact that this, as you can probably see, it's kind of speckled with age. So it's got all those kind of like age spots on it, which I personally absolutely love. Now, to make these pockets, all you're actually doing is kind of folding this up. But I saw an awesome tip, or somebody somebody left an awesome tip on my channel, um, you know, a really long time ago. And I've kind of tried to remember this ever since. Um, basically, if you take your book page, you know, as you've torn it out of the book like that, for example, and you fold it up, then what happens, and, you know, this doesn't necessarily bother me, but you're going to get, you know, part of it will be, um right way up and part will be wrong way up so you know will depend which way you fold it but you might have wrong way up here right way up here or you know vice versa but if you take your two sheets of book page and then you turn them over so for instance here place this now on top of the other one upside down so you've got one upside down and one up the right way then what happens is when you fold this over Hopefully this makes sense. You've now got your text facing on the right way on both of the, you know, both the back of the uh, pocket and also on the front of the pocket. I mean, again, you know, it doesn't necessarily bother me that much if the text is upside down, to be honest, because the generally, you know, you often cover this up anyway. But it's just something to bear in mind if that's something that's going to bother you. Now, the other thing is I've got kind of a tatty edge here. Again, I quite like that. Um, but it's, you know, personal choice whether you want to, you know, leave that tatty or whether you want to tidy it up. Then you're just going to take some glue and glue your book page together. I like to just kind of, you know, put a bit all over. And again, you know, if you're sewing these on the sewing machine, you might decide to not even bother gluing yours together. Personally, I do, um, because I always feel a bit funny about them just sort of being, um, you know, what I would describe as like empty inside the book pages because I feel like that's a vulnerable spot for tearing then but you know all of these things are just suggestions or things you know that I kind of like to do myself and you know you must do them kind of in your your preferred method so if you are happy to have them just stitched and not glued then that's absolutely fine and then all you're going to do is glue or stitch up here so, for instance, if I was stitching this, I would probably stitch along this line before stitching around the edge. So, open it up, stitch along this line, and then stitch around everywhere like that. But if you're just gluing, then just run your bead of glue straight down the side on both of your sides. 
and that's it and then just press your piece up i'm so sorry about my terrible um wipe there i've used it to mop my desk up from um coffee you know from doing some coffee dime but yeah and that's all there is to them and they're just such lovely pockets aren't they and of course then you know you could tidy this up if you know like me you've not kind of folded very accurately you could round the corners just for a bit more you know of a I don't know finished off look I quite like it when you just round some of the corners so for instance on this one I've just rounded those top two corners but I quite like the fact that the bottom are actually just square so you know you might want to kind of mix it up and do a bit of a bit of some and a bit of another so let's just put that to one side I'll run you through again even though it's obviously not very difficult so I'm sure you don't probably need telling again so I'll do it in a different book page just so it looks a bit more um, interesting than doing the same one each time so I've got my two book pages as you can see they're kind of joined where they've been torn out of the book again what I'm going to do is take one and put it upside down onto the other one and then what we do is we then whoops, fold that pocket up like that and that's how we get our text up the right way on both sides so then again what I will do is just open it back out glue this down here on the bottom flap and you know you may find that you get on better you know if you are choosing to glue you may find that you prefer to glue and then fold. Personally, I actually just find it easiest to just, you know, have the shapes together as they're going to be and then add my glue afterwards. But, you know, these are all just, like I say, suggestions and, you know, personal choice, really. So I think this is quite a, you know, nifty way of gluing it. So like that. And then you don't have to worry about when you fold it you know, your paper's being misaligned. I mean, they might be misaligned anyway, because I'm rubbish at aligning them. But, you know, whereas if you glue them and then fold them, you may find that that's slightly more problematic. This, for me, just seems to work slightly better. So again, I'm just going to run the glue straight up the two edges like that. Okay, and then just press that together. Like that. Okie dokie. And then next one. So, well, to be honest, I've probably shown you enough because they are very, very straightforward, like we say. So, I mean, to be honest, we probably could just now get on with um, mass making a bunch. So what I'm going to do is just pair up my book pages, I think, first and put them upside down to one another. And then I can obviously, whoops, I can then obviously come on to folding them and gluing them in a minute. So I'm just going to put them all together upside down, sort of assembly line style, so that I'm doing all of the similar, um, uh, what's the word? The similar actions, the similar, what is the word I'm looking for? No idea, similar things together anyway. So yeah, all I'm doing is pairing the papers up and then, you know, putting them one side upside down like that so that when I fold them up they're going to be you know the right way up both sides there we go so yeah let's just kind of have a relax now and have a catch up so I hope everybody's week has started out well if you watch my channel you'll know that I generally film these on a Monday so for me the week has just started it's yep yeah, it's Monday it's um it's okay out there it kind of looks a little bit gray but I think it's probably okay so today was the first day that the children went back to school so yeah my daughter's gone back to school my son <laughs> thank you so much to all the lovely people who commented about my oh dilemma last week well not my dilemma his dilemma last week was my middle son had um, been offered a job at a call centre um, the week before and you know I was desperately trying to obviously dissuade him from taking that job thankfully he decided against taking the job so yeah all relieved about that to be honest so my oldest son he also had been trying to persuade him not to take it so yeah we were very relieved when he decided against that so yeah that was um all good but thank you so much to all those lovely people who 
you know, because many of you shared like sort of horror stories of, you know, why really kind of working in a call centre, you know, I mean, it's fine and some people do love it, but, you know, it often can be kind of, um, yeah, just gruelling, you know, long days, not much reward and things like that. And, you know, yeah, I just, I don't feel that it was the job for him really. So, um, yeah, thank you so much to everybody because obviously when he then said to me, oh, I've changed my mind, you know, I mean, I was so relieved, I can't tell you. And, um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I do not have that picture of that person's face on the, on the paper. I might struggle. might struggle here. Hold on. Oh, this is now proving to be very complicated for me. Um, oh, I'm going to gonna have to come back to this because talking and trying to fathom this out is just proving too complicated um yeah anyway so thank you so much because when he then finally you know because of course I kept on saying to him oh you know what's your thoughts have you been thinking more about it you know and when he finally then came back and said yes I've you know decided against it I was like oh thank goodness and I said to him oh I'm so relieved I said because you know lots of people on my channel had kind of you know kindly commented and given their accounts of you know not such great experiences of working in call centers as well so yeah thank you so much everybody and um yeah thank you very much and yes i can report that he has now started today on his a levels at school so touch wood he's going to be doing that i don't know whether he's going to be doing that sort of all the time or whether he's just doing that while he's looking i mean obviously at the moment he's saying he's just doing that while he's looking for a job still um you know an apprenticeship and that's fine you know at least he's kind of giving it a try isn't he isn't he and you know he might decide that actually he really does enjoy it um i mean it was a bit unfortunate because he didn't quite get the grades that he needed to do the courses that he was wanting to do um and I think the one of the courses that he wanted to do was business and I think it was very very oversubscribed so of course I think they you know toughened up because they'd kind of yeah encouraged a bit too many people to apply for it which of course then they needed to kind of whittle the numbers down which was a bit disappointing for him because yeah he had really wanted to do that but having said that he's doing English Spanish and economics I have no idea really what economics even is um I mean it sounds very impressive it's not home economics like when we were in school <laughs> I do know that much um yeah I'm not quite sure what it actually entails but he's doing that so, like I say, I mean, I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that business was very oversubscribed and, you know, but it was a shame because, you know, his business teacher, well, she had kind of, yeah, led us to think it was a done deal and he was definitely having a place and she couldn't imagine the course running without him and, you know, so I think that was some of what was obviously, you know, very troubling was, you know, it was kind of like, well, I thought this was the course that they really wanted him to be doing. But anyway, and that was the course that he weirdly got, you know, the highest grades in. And that's the course that they then kind of said, oh, you can't go on. So, yeah, I think it was more to do with numbers, really. Right. I'm just going to take all of my um, pages and just then fold them. And then I will glue them all, you know, afterwards. So, but yeah, anyway, it's all it's all fine. So he's gone today to, well, hopefully get his timetable, you know, hear kind of how the, you know, the, um, I don't know, the, the structure will run, I suppose. I have to say, I think because he's not really doing the courses that he wanted to do, he did want to do English and he did want to do um, Spanish. So, you know, I mean, he's doing those two. And I did try and say, well, you are doing them, you know. Um, but I think because he's not doing all of the courses that he wanted to do, he wasn't feeling very enthusiastic about going. And of course he's trying to punish me for, you know, um, uh, you know, not, not allowing him to do the call centre job, but for, you know, putting him off doing that. So of course, you know, he wants to, wants to really make me feel bad, I think. So, but anyway don't feel that bad because I think it was the wrong choice <laughs> so 
so I'm I'm not feeling bad. And in time, he will kind of realise that actually it was it was good that I dissuaded him from doing it. But yeah, um, so he wasn't feeling kind of as enthused as you would hope on his first day of starting his A levels. But anyway, we'll see what he comes home and says. So. I don't know whether he's going to do a full day today or whether, you know, like I say, maybe it's just to kind of get your timetable and all of that stuff. And, you know, maybe he'll be home shortly. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, but my daughter's gone back. She's, um, you know, gone back to school today. I just can't believe where the time goes, you know, and you just think, oh, my goodness. I mean, how can my son be even doing A-levels already? I mean, it's just flabbergasting, isn't it? You know. You still can remember, can't you, when they're just tiny babies and then before you know it, it's like, wow, oh, that's just flown by. He's now doing A-levels. I mean, oh, what on earth? So, yeah. Anyway, hopefully he will perk up once he's back at school. I think that's the thing is actually try and, you know, I must try not to say back at school because I think that's the kick in the teeth is that he's like, oh, I'm just going to be back at school, you know. Um... But I think once he sees his friends and that type of thing, and of course, you know, they don't have to wear uniform now. So, you know, it's it's not the same. Um, you know, and he looked very handsome this morning. I said, oh, you look handsome and lovely, you know, in your normal clothes, not wearing your school uniform. And I mean, I joked and said, oh, you're going to be like um, in Greece, you know, when the pink ladies kind of say, you know, we're going to rule the school. I said, you're going to be like that. So <laughs> he didn't really laugh, but yeah he knew the line from the film um but yeah oh that's a good film isn't it Grease oh and poor Olivia Newton-John obviously you know that sad news that she passed away a few weeks ago and yeah I mean she'd battled I think with cancer for you know quite a long time and um I actually I think she had it when she was quite young and then um you know did successfully kind of fight it off and then it came back, you know, in the last few years. So, yeah, she um, obviously was, you know, courageous, brave lady and obviously put up a good fight against it. So she was such a beautiful, beautiful lady, wasn't she? So, yeah. But, oh, what a great film Grease is. You know, it's just one of those feel-good, feel-good films, isn't it? Oh, don't think I'm lining those up very well. I'll just have some of my tea. Right. So this morning I wanted to just crack straight on with work, really, because, um, you know, where I've not been obviously working properly during the summer holidays. And, you know, by that, I mean, of course, I've still been working every day. But I mean, oh, you just can't really kind of achieve as much as you'd like, can you, when, you know, people are at home and around. So I just couldn't wait to actually get started this morning. So I didn't even go to the gym, the gym this morning. I thought, no, I'm just going to um, get straight on with work. So, yep, here I am, straight on with work. It does feel good, I must say. You know, sounds an awful thing to say, but, you know, there is something to be said for once everyone's out of the house and gone. And I can just, or, you know, life can just get back to normal. It's, um... Yeah, it's really nice. It's got to be said. So, yeah. And to be honest, you know, I mean, before I know it, you know, blink and then the half term will be here again in October anyway. So, oh, I need to really make the most of it now. There we go. Okay. Right, let me finish my tea and then that's one less thing on the desk. Luckily, I'm um, I'm a bit of a golper when it comes to tea. So, yeah, luckily I was able to just glug that down very quickly. Right. So, just going to glue my pages together now. So, all assembly line style, you know, we've done all the folding together, the, you know, the tearing together, the pairing up together. And now we're just going to do all the gluing. Going to have a look in a second and see what the time is and whether I would have any time to take this across to the sewing machine. So we'll have a look in a second. Okay. Okay. 
trying to think really whether we've been up to anything else. Um, not really, to be honest. Oh, I had another beach day last week with my sister and her son and obviously me and my daughter. Um, just like the last beach day, you know, for the summer holidays. And um, yeah, that, that was okay. We went down there and it was very, very windy and quite cloudy. And I thought, oh, we're not going to be here for long. She, she thought we're not going to be here for long either. Because it wasn't looking like it was going to be very nice. But actually, it was one of those days where when you actually kind of, you know, laid down kind of on the sand... You were sort of out of the wind and then it was, you know, it was really quite warm. So, yeah, we made the most of the, the last couple of days. Obviously bought my daughter's um, school uniform. So, thankfully did not have to buy school uniform for my son. Because, like I say, he's not now wearing it. So, yeah, bought her uniform. Oh, it was so funny because um, I love, you know, all the little girls, you know, the sort of tea bar shoes, you know, with the little tea kind of going across and things. They're so cute, aren't they? Well, of course, she's she's eight now, so she was not wanting to have things like that. And the first pair that I pointed out, the first pair of shoes, I mean, they, they looked really nice to me. But, of course, my eyesight's not brilliant, so I hadn't actually noticed, but they must have had, like, a unicorn horn um, on that sort of... Um, uh, they weren't the T-shaped dolly shoes. They just had one strap. But yeah, they must have had like a unicorn horn on there, which I hadn't even noticed, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't very, very obvious. But of course, she spotted it instantly. I said, oh, mum, not having unicorns on my shoes. That's really babyish. I was like, oh, sorry. I didn't even notice the unicorns. I think they were really nice. So, oh my goodness, did we have to try on a lot of shoes She's at, like I say, that sort of age where, of course, I think um, she's a size two. So, uh, yeah, well, size two, size three in some shoes. So, of course, the threes are often a little bit too big, but the twos are kind of a bit on the small side. And, um, yeah, I mean, oh, she was just trying on numerous, numerous, numerous pairs. And, of course, when you go into that age or that size of shoes you know where they're just kind of veering into the slightly more sort of big girl type shoes if you know what I mean um so a lot of them were slip on which I mean that's not really that practical is it for school shoes you know for when you're eight because you're still running about quite a bit and things so you know of course there were lots of like slip on -y type shoes which she was oh they're lovely oh they're lovely they're lovely you know I mean they're flat and everything you know but uh, when I say they're flat actually uh, the style seems to be chunky so they're kind of like a chunky sort of sole um along them which you know one woman I saw her with her children and they were trying them on and her daughter was a skinny little um, thing and she tried on these big clumpy shoes and her mum just said, oh, you can get them off. You just look like a golf club. So, yeah, <laughs> just made me chuckle. But, of course, yeah, my daughter was like, oh, they're lovely. Oh, I love those. Oh, they're lovely. And, of course, then they didn't really stay on her feet, you know, because I'm in the shop and I'm saying to her, well, you know, just run along there and see how you would be running around in those. And, of course, then they're not really practical. So, you know, yeah. We had to try on a lot of shoes until she found a pair that were kind of suitably stylish enough for an eight-year-old, you know, but also practical and comfortable and, you know, everything else. So no doubt she will come home from school today moaning about them. They'll probably have rubbed her feet. But, you know, like I said to her, I mean, that's how shoes are sometimes for the first couple of, you know, times that you wear them. Um, I can remember last year we bought her shoes and oh she is terrible for you know whilst you're in the shop oh yeah 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 and then you get home and you know she went to put them on on that first day and then she put her old shoes on from last year I mean thankfully she can't do that this year because they were so tatty I actually threw them out but yeah she put on her old shoes from last year and we were just about to leave and I spotted them and said what's she doing why have you got last year's shoes on oh I can't wear those new ones they're just so tight and I said what do you mean they're so tight they're bigger than the shoes that you've got on well, of course, what she meant was, you know where they're very, very stiff because they're brand new. Um, she said, oh, I can't wear them. They're really, really tight. You know, oh, my goodness. I said to her, well, it's too late now because she also is one of these terrible, you know, must tear the tags off the second that you get home. So, of course, they had no tags on them. And I said to her, it's tough luck. You're going to have to keep them now. 
I said, look, when you get home, you know, wear them with like two pairs of socks for like the evening and that will stretch them. So I think if I recall, I think I did allow her to wear her old shoes just for that first day and just apologised to the teacher and said, oh, she's decided this morning that her shoes are too uncomfortable. Um, so that evening when she got home, I just kind of made her wear like two pairs of socks, you know, for a couple of hours. I mean, actually, it might not have even been a couple of hours. It wasn't very long. And yeah, straight away, obviously stretched them well enough. And then they were comfy for the whole year. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think she was really impressed with that tip. She was like, wow. I said, yeah, exactly. I said, because, you know, women, we've all had this where your shoes seem really uncomfortable. But, um, yeah, anyway, so she hopefully paid a bit more attention to picking a comfortable pair this year. We were certainly in the shop long enough. And I did keep on saying, you know, look, I haven't got money for buying more shoes. Like, if they're not comfortable, you're still going to be wearing them for the whole year. So make sure you get a pair you're pleased with. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that she did actually pay attention to that and actually buy a pair that she was pleased with. But who knows? You know, children are... Um, funny things aren't they they just have this habit of doing what they think they're going to do i'm just going to put them under my leg so that they're squishing down nicely um yeah anyway so that was her this morning this morning last week last week when we were choosing her shoes so yeah anyway i hope she has a nice day at school i'm sure she'll be thrilled to see her friends again and you know, it's nice, isn't it? That first day back is very exciting, you know, when you catch up with all your friends who you've not seen for ages and, you know, it's it's good fun. So, yeah, hopefully she'll come back enthused and excited. Well, hopefully my son will too, but we shall see. Okay. So my oldest son, um, he sold his car a few weeks ago because he's now got a work van. Um, and of course, we're struggling to then park everything, you know. And obviously, the, you know, the neighbours don't really like it. So, um, yeah, he sold his car thinking that he could, you know, just use the work van. Well, it's now transpired that, you know, of course he can't because they're changing it to a different work van and, you know, he won't be able to use it anymore. Um, you know, like in quiet time, uh, private time, you know. So, yeah, he's now looking for another car. So, no doubt he's going to be dragging me around looking at cars now. I mean, thankfully, I do really love cars. So, you know, I don't really mind. Although, I could do without it at the moment. Because, um, you know, we've got quite a lot of things that we're doing. So, it's not going to really be priority, it's got to be said. But, I mean, otherwise, he keeps on emailing me all these different cars... I'm having flashbacks of last time we were looking for a car for him. And, um, you know, he emailed me one last night after I'd gone to bed. So I obviously saw it when I first woke up this morning and said, oh, mum, what do you think to this? You know, and I had a look and I just said, it looks quite expensive. You know, it looks a bit overpriced. But I think cars are, are overpriced at the moment. You know, like with everything, the price of cars as well has gone like ridiculously crazy. So... You know, it's probably not really the best time to actually be buying a car at all because, um, you know, I'm not sure he's going to be able to buy anything very good at all for, you know, well, any amount of money, really. I think everything's just got ridiculous. But anyway, so that no doubt is what we're going to be doing soon. Um, yeah. And then next week, oh, I'm kind of dreading it already. So if you watch my channel, you might remember that a few weeks slash about three months ago, well, no, actually, probably a couple of months ago, um, we rented our house out because there was a um, an event near our house. It was the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and we are very lucky because we literally are like five minutes from Goodwood. So we were able to rent our house out for that event. And, um, you know, I mean, to be honest... I think probably the Goodwood events are the only thing that really is, you know, that appealing where we live because we're not close enough to the beach probably to be like a beach beach holiday ha house, you know. Um, but Goodwood, you know, obviously that does attract a lot of people. And um, yeah, so we were lucky enough to be able to rent our house out for that. And um, there's another event, the Goodwood Revival, which, 
if you, again, if you watch my channel, you may recall that I had gone to last year and I did quite a bit of video, um, sort of vlogging while I was there, um, of the Goodwood Revival. And um, yeah, so it's coming up in, well, it's next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend. So again, at the time, I thought it would be a good idea to, you know, get some extra money and rent our house out. So, um, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's now coming up next week. Ah, why did I think that was going to be a good idea? I mean, to be honest, the first time around, it was so awful. <laughs> I can't tell you. And now I'm just like, why did I do this again? Oh no, I don't want to have to pack everything up again. I mean, I swear to God, it was such a lot of work. I mean, yeah, it really, really was a lot of work. Now, I'm hoping it's not going to be so bad this time because last year's kind of um, was made worse because we were decorating, you know, because we wanted to move our rooms around and things. You know, so that made it worse. Um, it was obviously the first time we'd ever done it. So I had to buy quite a lot of things, you know, that we didn't kind of have. So things like, you know, replace towels and all of that stuff, you know, because, well, like everyone probably, you know, my towels, they'd probably seen better days. Um, so, you know, I had a lot of kind of buying and, you know, returning of items and all of that kind of stuff to do. Um, saucepans, my saucepans, I mean, I'd had them since I got married. And, um, yeah, again, they'd seen better days. Things like the handles were all kind of coming off and things. So, you know, I bought like new saucepans and things like that for the guests. And um, yeah, I mean, touch wood, we've got all that stuff now. So, I mean, of course, there won't be that aspect to it. And um, yeah, I didn't actually pack everything up um, or, you know, get everything out again that I had packed up last time because I thought, well, it's only a few weeks away. I'm going to see if we can make do without getting all the things back out. So all of our clothes, for example, I'd packed them up into our garage and things. And um, yeah, I mean, somewhere in the boot of my car and stuff like that. And I've just left them there. So luckily, the weather's stayed consistently OK. Oops, torn that, torn that now. Um, consistently OK. So I was able to get away with like, you know, the same clothes and all of that, you know, just my summer clothes. So uh, let's hope that it doesn't suddenly get freezing between now and next week. Um, you know, so a lot of our stuff is still packed away. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be anywhere near the, you know, horrendous experience it was last time. Um, because it was like full on moving house last time. Obviously, I don't pack my craft room away or anything, you know, because that's not obviously a room that they're going to be using. So, you know, that's not so bad. Um, but yeah, there is part of me that's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm having to do this again. Because there was a lot of cleaning, a lot of cleaning that I had to do, obviously, for them um, to come as well. So, yeah, already I'm like dreading it. But I'm just going to, you know, really work between now and then. And then I will probably stop work on Tuesday because they're coming on the Thursday. So I will, my last day of work next week really will be Monday. And then, um, you know, I'm just going to really try and get an incredible amount of stuff done this week so that then I can spend the whole of Tuesday, the whole of Wednesday cleaning and getting ready for the guests on the Thursday. So hopefully again, we're going to go and stay with my parents. I had mentioned it to them at the time. They did then joke and said, I hope you're not coming to stay with us again at the revival. They said that after the good bit of... Uh, festival of speed and I kind of implied that we wouldn't but obviously now the times here you know the hotels are all very expensive so I'm hoping that we are going to but I haven't broached that subject with them so we shall see but um yeah <laughs> we'll see we'll suddenly turn up at their house and they'll be horrified no hopefully they will be fine but um yeah I just can't believe it's come around so quickly you know like when we like I say, advertise the house and things. I was oh so excited and thought, ah, oh, this is a brilliant way to actually kind of like get some extra money, you know. Oh my goodness, no. It, it, oh, don't get me wrong, we're very fortunate that we're living nearby to somewhere, you know, that's got this event that we can do that. I mean, it's a shame it's only twice a year from a sort of, you know, opportunity point of view. But having said that, it's definitely a lot of work so if you're thinking it's a kind of get rich quick scheme or you know 
yeah, it was kind of grueling. I mean, last time I definitely, definitely earned that money, I can tell you. So, uh, yeah, and I suspect I'm going to feel that same way next week as well. Anyway, I should be moaning full on about it next week, I'm sure. Right, I'm going to take these ones to the sewing machine. Um, now, I have got this pile that I still haven't done yet, but I've just glanced at the time and we are up to 35 minutes. So, although having said that, if I'm doing these off... Well, we might be okay. Let me just do a couple more. I'll do a couple more. Um, I'll do a couple more and I'll glue a couple more, I think, as well. So, so that I'm not stitching them all. So, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. Okay. Oh, and thank you so much to everyone who watched my Halloween um, preview shorts video. Um, yeah, very excited. I'm still working on that Halloween kit and um, it's not quite finished. So, you know, again, I probably won't really get to do that much work on it now. And I'll probably finish it, you know, when I go to my mum and dad's, um, you know, next weekend. But I'm so excited by that one. It's so not my type of thing. And weirdly, I feel like, although it's not my type of thing, I feel like I've almost got into the zone where actually I really love doing the Halloween stuff. I mean, it's so way out of my comfort zone. It's, you know, so not my type of thing. And yet there's something so, so, so fun about it because it's just so different to anything else that you do. So, um, yeah, I can't wait literally can't wait to get that finished and do something with it so I had a lot of fun even making the shorts video um you know as you know if you watch my channel editing the videos and things that's not really kind of my my forte it's not really something that I enjoy or anything um but I did have fun doing that one because I had a lot of fun obviously finding that creepy music and yeah just just making it look really creepy my daughter she was um Oh, mum, that's horrible. Oh, that kit's so horrible. Why have you got them horrible dolls? I said, oh, don't you think it's really cool? She said, oh, it's really scary. I don't even want to look at it, she said. So, yeah, I'm thinking kind of Halloween horror or horror. Horror Halloween, I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, just wanted to go for a really horror kind of vibe, a really horror type of um, feel for that. So, I know. I mean, I think... There is a kind of market for that type of thing, but it's probably, um, yeah, probably in the minority. But having said that, I think there are quite a lot of people who do like, you know, the Halloween and the dark and, the, you know, very kind of like creepy sort of stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much to everyone who said, oh, I can't wait to see the kit and things, you know. Hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun working on that one. Or working with that one perhaps I should say but like I say I haven't actually finished the kit yet so kind of finished most of the background pages I just need to um, crack on with the ephemera part of the kit so yeah keep your eyes peeled and the autumn kit I know I mentioned the autumn kit last week um, definitely I was hoping to get it in my shop last week it didn't go in but it is hopefully going to go in this week so yeah Hopefully I will get it in this week. And I've also got some lace packs um, that I'm also going to hopefully get in. Hopefully again this week. Um, I will try and either do a short or, you know, on the um, uh, community kind of tab. Maybe I will put it on there when I list the um, lace so that you guys know. Um, I'm also going to try and use Instagram a bit more. So I could perhaps put it on Instagram. I shall see um you know when i come to do it oh i've not glued this one together look uh yeah i shall see when i come to do it but i will let you know somewhere um that obviously i'm listing the lace packs so yeah lots of exciting things coming up so lots of things in the pipeline that i've been sort of working on a bit you know behind the scenes so hopefully you know in the the next few weeks we're going to have some um some different stuff so you know different stuff probably in my shop and maybe some different things to work with and things like that so yeah we'll kind of see but yeah 
yes, exciting times anyway. So yeah, it's all, it's all exciting stuff. Right, okay. I've already glued that one down there. So I'm going to take them to my sewing machine and I will be back. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine and yep, I've stitched a bunch of them. I've got one or two left, um, you know, left to stitch. So let's just take one now and decorate it up. So yeah, let's just take one of these ones. So let's just count how many we've done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow, hang on, still going. 17. And then I've got these ones which are, um, you know, have got to be glued down yet. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Wow, 28. So they've got to be stitched or glued yet. Um, but that's incredible, isn't it? That's definitely a record, I think, for a mass make session. So uh, yeah, let's let's just decorate one up. Okay, I mean, obviously those ones aren't finished, but yeah, pretty um, <laughs> pretty uh, good going, wasn't it? Right. Okay. So this one, I'm going to just trim down the edges. Like I say, I mean, I actually quite like that sort of rough edge, you know, where it's been torn from the book. But just to you know demonstrate, I suppose how. We can get different looks. So round those two edges. Like I say, I quite like just having the top edges rounded. Now, this is my new autumn kit that I've just said that, you know, hopefully is going to be in the shop in the next couple of days. Um, so it may even be in there now. I'm going to do my best to get it in there in the next couple of days anyway. So I'm going to just take one of the little images from this sheet, I think. Now, I'm wondering if I can get the pumpkin or pumpkins maybe a bow and maybe this cute little owl as well so yeah let's get all of those oh my goodness time to put my glasses on I'm afraid hold on a second it's just no point even trying to fussy cut these bits without my glasses on it would be a horrible mistake okay oh I can't tell you how much I'm loving the colors in this new autumn kit I'm really excited to work with it with you guys. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of in the process of hopefully putting together a project with it. And, um, yeah, like I say, it will be in my shop, but the project won't be, um, you know, on video for a while. Um, I just need to kind of crack on and kind of finish it, really. Um but yeah, really love the colours and things in this kit. It's so pretty. And, you know, just, um, yeah, very different. But still, hopefully, you know, really captures autumn. Okay. Just take that little owl. Oh, my goodness, how cute is he? Okay, and then we've got a couple of bows as well. So I'm just going to take a smaller, smaller bow. Okay. Okay, right. I don't know whether we're going to get one of those kind of Indian summers or not this year. We often do, but yeah, there's not really any sign of it today. Although, I mean, having said that, it's still not particularly cold. Um, you know, I mean, the weekend wasn't cold or anything. It was grey, but yeah. And actually Saturday, wow, there was a huge downpour. Was it Saturday? Yeah, I think it was Saturday. There was a huge downpour. But yeah, it wasn't, um, you know, it, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't cold or anything. Right. Now, these are some of the background pages from the autumn kit. So thinking we could have some of this in the background as well so have coffee dyed this is the only thing and now I'm thinking oh, I'm going to have to really coffee dye these bits aren't I well I guess I can just ink these up so I've just got some walnut stain here and hopefully then they'll take on a bit more of a you know coffee dyed effect oh my goodness look I've really gone way too thick with that walnut stain haven't I yeah 
didn't realise it was still so juicy as that. Because this is that same one that I had all that time ago that I haven't really been using lately. But my goodness, it's still very juicy, isn't it? As we saw just now. Right, let's just tear this little bit off here. So I'm thinking, could we have this at the top? That looks pretty, doesn't it? Or do we want to have it down here with our little bits and pieces? Oh, I wish that I had not overdone it with that, um, you know, cough, uh, walnut stain. Yeah, I didn't dream it was going to be still coming out so furiously. And now it's, of course, it's on there now. I can't, I can't undo it, can I? Uh, right, do we want another bit? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because I've puffy dyed a few of these sheets, um, you know, ready for the project that I'm working on. So let's just see. Oh, look at this one. How cute does that look? So, yeah, let's just take some of this. Oh, do you know, I think it would have been better like that, wouldn't it? Right, let's have a look. I'm going to try this sideways. Yeah, I think that might work better. So let's just take that down a bit. Okay. Oh my goodness. Sorry, just flicking everything around now. Honestly, we are we talking about Christmas soon, won't we? Absolutely shocking. Okay. Pop that down. Yeah, lots of this pretty duck egg colour in this autumn kit. I must say it's really lovely. You know, just was really nice to do something very different for autumn. I mean, uh, hopefully it's, like I say, still got a very autumnal feel. Um, but yeah, just kind of used a few different sort of unexpected colours um, like this duck egg and you know the pinks which I just think actually worked really really well oh loving that yeah loving that right okay let's put it on like that okay I haven't worked on this project for a couple of days that I've been doing and now I'm struggling to think what is it that I'm working on Am I going to even put this um, book page pocket on that project? I'm not sure whether it's a project that really will have book page pockets, but anyway, we shall see. Okay. And then, yeah, love that owl up there. So cute. So cute. Love those down there. And what did I do with that bow? That's over here. Okay. So yeah, we could then have the bow maybe over there. Now, do we want, I've got this gorgeous green lace, which I thought may be quite nice with this. Or I've got this brownie colour, which is probably more autumn-like, it's got to be said. So yeah, let me just snip this down. It's maybe that green, although I love the green. It's not really probably very autumn looking, is it? So. Snip that out there. Put that there. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, love how that looks. Right. Okay, so this lace, as you can see, I mean, I've kind of cut it down the middle. It's not very um, neatly cut or anything like that, but I think it's fine. You know, it's it's fine. Don't think it really matters too much. And then let's just pop our bow on oh now I can't wait to actually get working back on this um, project again yeah just stepped away for a couple of days while I was doing some other things and um, 
yeah, I can't wait to get back to it now. Now I've seen this again, I'm like, oh, I was really loving the colours and things. So yeah, I can't wait to uh, pick it back up. Right. I've also got in my coloured book plates, there's quite a few duck egg book plates, which I think would go really well with this kit, which I've only just really thought of. But yeah, they would go very well with this. Right, I'm just going to ink this slightly. Oh my goodness, when I say slightly, obviously I meant completely smother it. Who knew that that walnut stain would still be quite so, quite so walnutty. Hmm, very, uh, <laughs> very shocking. Right. Okay, uh, I'm just hot gluing these on just, you know, for speed and also quite a bit of hot glue so that I'm not pressing them down so much. And I talk about this all the time, but, you know, then they've got a slightly raised kind of effect, haven't they? So I really like that. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look and see at my coloured book plates. Just see if I've got any printed in the duck egg blue. Oh, I have. Look. Now, that never happens normally. Normally I would look and then find I haven't, but yeah, today I have. So let's just take this one. Oh, again, I should really put my scissors, put my scissors, put my glasses on for this because of course I'm struggling to see to cut it. Let me pop them on. Okay. Like that. Ink around the edge of that just a tiny bit. Okay, yep. Now, where would we like that? There. Oops. Nearly ripped that lace off. Oh, I did rip it off a bit. Look. So, oh my goodness. Ripped it off completely now. That's not good. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, disasters do happen, don't they, all the time? <laughs> Okay, do we like the journal down there? Do we like it on the lace? Which looks quite pretty, actually. Yeah, I quite like it on the lace. Would not have, uh, you know, expected to put it there, but it does look really cute there, doesn't it? Like that. Okay. So that's my pocket. Okay, took us a long time to decorate that, didn't it? But then it's got quite a bit on there now, hasn't it? So, yeah, I hope that you like them. Like I say, completely not my idea. They are Patricia Veramonte's, um, you know, book page pockets. These are what I would describe as the original, you know, um, junk journal book page pockets. Personally, I mean, I just think they're probably still the best ones. You know, look how quickly we've made them for a start. I mean, if that's not a winning, winning factor, I don't know what is. And, yeah, I mean, they just always look really great in a journal. So, um, yeah. Hope that you all have fun making some. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.